What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a really cool review today because I've had this for a while, I've been testing it, and I have to say this is nice for people who want something portable. If you're on the road and you wanna charge batteries, you can charge from one battery at a time up to six batteries with a balance board. So I'm gonna show you that. You can also charge your tiny Whoop batteries on the fly with a little tiny board like this. It charges the original connectors for the 1S batteries and you can do these 2.0 connectors as well on here. That's made by Crazy Pony, but I'll, I'll try to find you one of those. It also has an XT60 on here to plug in. Uh, Whoop season's coming up guys, so it's uh, time to find some type of charge option out there on the road. This is the other option for your bigger batteries, the XT60 parallel board. And this one will do up to 6S. Uh, it does have balance connectors from two to 6S on there. And it has your balance lead right here and your XT60 there, which just plug into this unit. But what's cool about this is that it is a 150 watt little micro charger, much smaller than one of my all time favorites, the ISDT. Q6 plus and this one has twice the watt and it does 14 amp on a maximum charge but 300 watt for the Q6 plus and this one is 150 watt it's not bad because you can still charge up to a 6s battery now what's cool about this is that the M6 has a voltage range on here it's from 7 to 28 volts so that means you could use a 2s battery out in the field to charge by plugging in your XT60 on the input side you can use something as large as the 4S 16,000 milliamp, and that's what I generally use. These went on sale several years ago, and I grabbed a bunch of them. Um, but you can also get something like this as well. Check this out. This is a giant 6S 10,000 milliamp from UR UAV. And the th thing that's cool about this is that this is a $79 battery, um, but you can also use this in much larger aircraft. Um, I do have some big twin iNav planes that can use that and you'll get quite a long flight time, but you'll get a ton of charge time on a 10,000 milliamp or a 16,000. Um, I really like the 16,000s. They'll last you pretty much an entire day out in the field because remember when you're charging a 4S 1300, you're only topping it off each time. So let's take a look at the M6 and I'll open up the box for you. Here it is, super tiny, fits in the palm of your hand. It has input DC voltage on the side from seven to 28 volt. On this side, you have your receiver plug there. It's signal, power, and ground right there. And you also have a USB charging port for charging your devices. We're also, interestingly enough, powering this unit from any type of charge bank, which is really cool. So you get this double-sided USB cable in the box and that's what this is for you can plug that in on this side grab your power bank if you already have one a lot of people do so i have a 10,000 milliamp pocket juice which only actually has uh, about three percent charge in it still but check that out it fires up as soon as you plug it in that's really really cool so uh, if you already have one of these these are really great because this one's also 10,000 milliamp and should last an entire day of charging out in the field which is really really nice on the back of the unit, we have this huge fan, and we also have these two little feet, which I do recommend using so that you get the proper airflow when you're charging, uh, because the, the entire back of this is a fan, because all of this in here needs to be cooling when you're charging. Uh, if you sit it flat on your bench, you're not going to get a very good airflow through the unit. So uh, over on the other side, we have the output for your XT60 positive here and negative there. The flat side of your XT60 is always going to be positive. So uh, guys that are soldering up their own leads, that's usually how I remember that. You also have the balance port over here for your balance connector on your battery. This is ground over here and positive on this side and two to six S. And let me show you something that's kind of cool. If you've never seen this plugged in before, this is the way they plug in. Usually your ground on the far end of the balance port goes to the ground on this side, just like that. And so on all the way up to six S. But what's neat about this is that we don't have anything plugged in right here. And watch this. When we plug in this battery, this also kind of acts as a battery checker which is pretty neat. I haven't seen a lot of chargers that will do that. So it's showing my uh, charge is 99%. I have a total battery voltage of 16.75. It shows me delta at 0.02 volt. And we have the temperature 27C. 
and we have each individual cell listed here. So um, all the information that I'd need on my battery, and that's a pretty neat option. And again, this charger does have from 2 to 6S power input. So uh, we're going to try out a 6S battery today, and hopefully it will not explode on us and uh, send sparks and smoke out of this unit when I plug in the 6S battery. So this is the 22 volt, 10,000 milliamp battery plugged in, and it is handling it. So uh, this is not a touch screen, like I said before. So these buttons are super sensitive. And I'm just going to zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit of what's going on here. I did jump into the charge menu, but this is the back button. Looks like the stop button. And we can see charger, measure, output, and settings here. So uh, let's go ahead and grab a battery. And we'll just plug it straight in to the charge unit, the charge output side. So now we can select by pressing this button here. We'll go into the charge menu. Now we can do several different things here, uh, several different types of batteries, which is kind of cool. So. We're going to start here. We want to charge, discharge, or storage charge. We're going to charge. And it already auto-detected the battery, so it knows that it's a, a, a 4S battery. So we're going to go ahead and press this button and charge to 16.8 volt. We're going to say OK. I keep forgetting it's not a touch screen. So there you have all of your battery information while it's charging. That's pretty cool. You see all the different cells in here. And we're pretty much at 100% with this battery and all the way to the top of this 4S battery. And the fast charging is finished. And that's pretty cool. So we can stop that. I keep wanting to touch the screen, but it's not a touch screen. So we're going to go back. And you can change the charge current. Right now it's set to 2 amp. And I usually don't charge over much over 2 amp uh, for my, my 4S 1300s. You can also discharge if you'd like to. You can set a new setting on here. So we're going to say OK. And now we can go in and change the end voltage if we want. Say if it's an HV battery, you can up that to your HV settings. Um, this one happens not to be an HV, but I'm just going to leave it at the standard LiPo charge rate there. And I'm going to press back and it'll take me out. Now I can go down to the uh, cells and we can change this to auto or you can change it um, to set it yourself if you'd like to do 1S or whatnot. But I just leave it on auto because the auto works actually pretty good. So I'm going to go out of that. And now we're going to go down to the charge current. Say I want to slow charge my battery. And, and, and I've had batteries last me over five years if I charge at this rate. So um, some of you guys will say, oh, no, I charge at 5 amp. Well, your batteries won't last as long as mine. So we're just going to click on that. And we're going to go down to about 1.3 amp and that is a nice charge rate for a 4s 1300 yes it does take longer but if you're at home it's not a big deal you can wait around for it so now we're going to say charge and we're going to say okay i keep trying to tap the screen but it's not a touch screen and there we go that's pretty cool so now we're going to stop and we're going to go back so now we're back on the main screen and I showed you that port before for plugging in your servo type lead from your receiver to check that. And if you want to do that, you can go to the measurer and that is this one right here. If I can get up to it, there we go. Click enter and you can see it will do bat. So let's check the bat and that is your battery checker inside the menus here with this power source plugged in. So I'm going to go back. You can also do PPM here, PWM and SBUS, but we don't have any receivers plugged in. So it'll, it'll tell you whether your channels are working or not. It'll, it'll show you all your active channels on your receiver, which is really cool. So uh, if you think you have a receiver that might be going bad, this is a great way to check out your receiver and make sure it's healthy. So now we're going to go to output. And again, we're not, we don't have anything to, to check out, but this is our output channels and the power there. And we have the last one is settings. So we'll go into settings. The lowest input at 10 volt there. Power input 150. Safe temp, safe time, 120 minutes. So if your battery is charging um, and taking a really long time, you're doing a really slow charge, you can stop that, which is kind of cool. So uh, say if you forget it on your charger and it doesn't overcharge your battery, 
while you're walking away from this unit. But um, like I always say, like never walk away from your battery charger. Um, discharge mode, let's check those out. Enter, recycle, we'll just leave that on, enter. And idle beep, if it's idle for a few minutes and nothing's happening, it will beep and remind you that it's plugged in and on, which is kind of cool. And you can change that as well. From five minutes, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Let's see how far we can go. We can go quite a ways up, 30 minutes out. So you can pretty much set that to what you want. Five minutes is usually a good reminder time that it's still on. So we're gonna leave that. And the S bus value, backlight, you can change that as well. Buzzer, we can turn that buzzer down just a little bit. That's kind of nice. A little bit quieter. Hub support, language is English and default. Probably resetting it back to the factory default. And now we can go back out. Now we're on the main menu. And now say you wanted to charge many batteries at once, you can use the parallel balance board here. This is kind of cool. And we're just gonna use this as an example real quick. We're just gonna start on the first one. And I'm gonna plug in the 4S lead on the 4S charge port right there and the XT60. And we're gonna go to charger and we'll just start that process again here. It's really actually pretty quick to start charging a battery because um, it auto detects the battery cells in here, which is really nice. Now for guys that want to charge 1S batteries, you can also do that because, hey, whoop season's coming up. So we're just gonna plug in the XT60 here and we'll see if it'll start a charge with my 1S 450s. I have an Emax one here and the LDA RC one. Let's see if it does an auto detect. And these are 2.0 connectors, PH 2.0. There we go, there's one. And let's go back to the main menu here. So these buttons are very sensitive. Now let's go to charger here and we'll click it again and we'll say charge here. It says charge to 4.2 volt. That's what we want. So now it's charging two of my 1S Tiny Hawk batteries. And those are already charged, so we're done. That was quick. Quite a noisy little unit. Lets you really know across the room, which is kind of nice. So I, I, I have to say for, for $26, the, the price of this little charger has dropped dramatically in the last uh, couple months. It has been out since summertime and um, I've been testing it again. And I just haven't had time to review it because I've just been doing, doing some really, really big reviews for you guys. Uh, but sometimes I have to step back and, and review the smaller stuff as well. But I'm happy that I was able to find out so much about this charger in such a short time. It's really easy to use. It's um, also really awesome that it supports voltage up to something like a gigantic 6S UR UAV battery. So um, take this one out on the road with you and you could definitely charge your 4S 1300s uh, for, for a day out flying. Um, it's a little bit heavier of a battery, but then again, you don't have to have a power outlet and you can charge anywhere, which is super nice. Uh, especially if you're doing some gym flying indoors in the winter time when tiny whoop season is coming up, that would be awesome. You can also use the USB charger to charge from a power bank, which I think is super cool. Or you could plug it into a USB port um, and charge on the bench, which is also nice. So uh, plug it into an AC outlet and then plug in your USB right here and you're charging from an AC source. So uh, it's kind of an AC and DC type of charger. That's that's nice to have both options because some of these other ones don't do that. So um, that is really cool. So overall, I'm going to say that I'm going to have to give this one a decent rating. I, I think that this one is probably, they have some other ones that they have, uh, but this one happens to be my favorite, especially for the price. And for new guys getting into the hobby, this is a no brainer. Uh, hopefully this helped you guys and I'll try to put some links down below for the 1S charging boards and the parallel boards and uh, some of those 10,000 milliamp batteries. These are a good deal right now. Uh, $79 is a crazy low price for a 10,000 milliamp battery. Shop around out there for prices um, because this is the, the lowest price on any 6S 10,000 milliamp out there. But thanks again, guys, for watching my channel. I'm Justin Davis. Take care, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.